All right, good morning. It is Monday, June 1st, and welcome to another episode of Monday Mornings with Matt. It's like we've got a couple people here. Um, yeah, so I think this is the last week I'm going to be doing this for a while at least. Maybe I'll, I'll start it up again at some point. Um, it's been a lot of fun. When I first did this the first week, I didn't know if it would be a one-time thing or what. Um, I decided uh, after a couple weeks that maybe I'd try to keep it going until for, for as long as school was out. Um, I know a lot of you still have a few weeks of school left. Uh, my kids are done with school now. Their school got out a little earlier than usual. Um, so, so I decided this would probably be a good week to, to, to end this weekly thing and I can, I can start really focusing on uh, the graphic novel that I've been working on. Um, but before I get started, I just want to thank uh, all of you guys that have been here drawing with me every week. Um, if you're here, maybe leave a comment. Let me know you're here. Um, even 11 weeks in, I always have this little moment at the beginning where I hope it's actually recording and people are actually uh, able to, to hear what I'm saying. So just let me know. Um, so uh, I was trying to think of what to draw this week. Um, we got a lot of requests last week and in the last few weeks and it was hard to decide on one animal so I'm gonna show you in a little bit what we're gonna do this week but I was just looking through my sketchbook um, at all the stuff that we have drawn in these in these 10 weeks looks like the Eastwoods are here good morning Will and Jack and Melissa and the Olins hey Jim and Sophia awesome and you can see and hear me that's good I still somehow have like this 20 second delay I think from when I talk to when you guys see it on Facebook I don't know I, I haven't been able to fix that but um, awesome good that you guys are here um, so I'm gonna switch to my my split screen th here so you can see my drawing pad so yeah I was just looking through my sketchbook and uh, the first couple weeks I did this I was kind of figuring it out and um, I didn't uh, I didn't have this setup where I, I figured out how to do you could see me and you could see my my book so I was I was just drawing on a on a big sketch pad um, so those pictures are somewhere else but I was looking through all the things that we have drawn and it's kind of cool to see um, I, I made this in my sketchbook way back when I first came up with calling it Monday mornings with Matt looks like Emerson is here and Ashley hey guys um, remember the week that we drew bunnies and if you guys haven't if this is your first time uh, tuning in uh, for the Monday mornings with Matt, you can go back. All these all these other episodes will be permanently uh, on my Facebook page um, if you search Matt Tavares on Facebook or also on my website, TavarisBooks.com uh, or MattTavares.com. They're the same thing. Um, but yeah, these will be – you could always go back. And even if you've done uh, one of these before, you can try again. Um, it's always good practice. Uh, so remember the week we drew my bunnies, Halo and Toga. We had a guest appearance. Um, this is the the one time we drew human characters. We did a baseball scene. Uh, I skipped a page for some reason. Remember the penguin? We learned that penguins, uh, their flippers, I think, are called spatulas, right? Yeah, we learned that from my friend Ryan. Uh, here's my... We did a tiger. That was That was one of my favorites. That was a cool one to draw, drawing those stripes. We drew a dolphin. It's kind of cool to flip through all these now. We did the elephant. And a bunch of you, I think, probably have all these drawings too because a lot of you I know have been here uh, throughout the whole thing. Um, let me make sure I can see your comments over here. Hi, Josh. I think you've been here every time, right? It's awesome that you're here. And I'm sorry, it's sad. I know I... I, uh, I'll, I'll do more of this stuff too. I was thinking um, even if I don't do the weekly Monday thing, I'll, I'll keep posting like little drawing demos on my Facebook page. So make sure your parents keep keep checking for that stuff. The alligator, that was a fun one. Most of these were just requests, things that people suggested during the, during the last 10 weeks. That was, I think, a practice page where I was trying to figure out what to do for the, uh, for the 3D drawing that we did last week. And I know... I know my nephew Will was telling me that was his favorite and his least favorite because it was it was hard and confusing, but it was also cool to try to figure out how to do it. So that's probably a good thing, I guess. Like sometimes, you know, even if something isn't isn't easy and fun, sometimes you learn something from it. And hopefully that happened. 
Uh, there's the one I did when I was talking about how to how to draw in and, and make your picture look like it's 3D. That was just from that week too when I when I, someone asked how to make a curvy road in 3D. All right, so now we get a blank piece of paper. Um, so I was going through all the different suggestions for what to draw, and I decided it was hard to pick one animal. So I'm going to make a crazy super animal. Um, oh, let me see. Do I have all my? All right. So the animal that I'm going to draw is called a lion-headed chebra. All right. So it's part lion, part zebra, part cheetah. Um, it's a very rare animal. I don't like most of the animals I draw. I don't know much about the lion-headed chebra. Um, so if we have any lion-headed chebra experts here, I would love to hear some lion-headed chebra facts. Um, anything you happen to know about about the lion-headed chebra, I think would be very helpful. Um, so just like when I draw pretty much any animal, um, I'm going to start with simple shapes. So that's kind of the one thing, maybe if you if you remember anything from all, all these lessons, is starting out with simple shapes. Don't worry about don't worry about details right at first. Um, start out not pushing down very hard. And then as you as you figure your way through your picture, you can kind of zero into those details and um, and push down harder and make those marks uh, a little more more confident as you go. Hello to Jason Lewis. Nice to see you here. All right, so I'm just going to get started. Um, same way I drew pretty much every animal here, I'm going to make an oval for the body. So there's our oval. Doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of quick and easy. Hopefully you can see that on your on your screen there. Um, and then for the head, I'm going to make a circle. And I'm going to quickly just draw in the legs too. Uh, maybe the, the front legs will kind of come down like this. Sort of like we're making just like this stick animal that just has sticks for legs. And I do have reference photos of different animals to help me. Like I said, I, I usually, when I like to draw, when I draw something and I want it to look real, it really helps to have uh, some pictures to help me remember what those animals look like. Now the back legs, um, I'm going to make come back like this. Now the lion-headed uh, chebra. The front legs look a lot like a zebra's legs, but the back legs look more like a cheetah's legs. And I think we're getting our first lion-headed chebra facts here. I figured Will would have some good facts. He knows a lot about animals. Lion-headed chebras run 72 miles per hour, and all their, all of their striped dots are unique. That is fascinating. I never knew that about lion-headed chebras. Thank you. Thank you to the Eastwoods. Seems like something that Will maybe came up with. That is really interesting. Um, and I think the tail will be more like a cheetah tail. So it'll kind of, they have like these big, powerful looking tails. All right. So now we have kind of the quick, the quick easy uh, shapes to get us started. Um, now, as you might imagine, the lion headed chebra's head looks like a lion head. So I'm going to start with that. Uh, we have the circle. That's sort of something to get us started, but a lion's head isn't quite a circle. Uh, so I'm going to carve into a little bit. Um, let's make kind of a line coming down here. Maybe going back like that. We'll make the part of the head where the face kind of comes out. Um, not sure what that's called. Maybe the spatula. Um, we'll make a little V shape where the nose goes. I should have worn my Hakuna Matata Lion King t-shirt today. I know my, my nephew Jack has a cool Hakuna Matata t-shirt. We were twins the other day when we both wore our Lion King t-shirts. But I couldn't find it this morning so I just wore whatever I could find. Um, so there's kind of the nose and the mouth. The lion, we're going to make it look sort of like a male lion. It'll be a male um, lion-headed chebra. So we've got kind of like the fur there. 
Now this eye, you can just see a little bit. So on that line there, I'm going to make kind of a football shape. And the other eye is, is over here. It's sort of like if you extend the nose upward, um, you'll have a little oval. So I'm getting into some little details on the face here. The coolest thing about a lion, I think, is drawing the mane. So we have there's kind of a couple couple levels of it where the first one you know from that original circle you're just going to go go out a little bit with with some kind of crazy fur coming out there and you can see a little bit of on on this side of the the head too it looks like it goes even even further like up here kind of make a it's kind of messy there but kind of just a scribbly crazy lion's mane that's sort of the main thing I feel like each of these animals that we've drawn there's usually one distinguishing characteristic that makes it really clear that's what you're drawing and I think for a lion and for the male lion that that really is the main kind of I can't go wrong just make a bunch of crazy lines all around the, the head there and it'll look like a lion um, but unlike a lion, the front legs of the lion-headed chebra look like um, zebra legs, which are a lot like horse legs, really. Um, so let's get the legs here now. They have kind of knobby knees, so maybe make little circles for the knees. Similar to when we drew Dasher, like reindeer legs are kind of like that. Reindeer legs are a little skinnier. So I'm kind of going over those lines I drew before, but just adding you know, a little more shape to it and making it darker. Remember, once I feel like I'm confident that the marks are in the right place, then I can, I can push down a little harder and make a darker line. So now we have the lion head. We have these kind of skinnyish zebra legs. the back I'm gonna I'm gonna carve into our oval a little bit to make the back I'm usually between you know the hind legs and the front legs the back of a cheetah or a zebra or a lion-headed zebra sort of sags down a little bit comes around up here um, So now towards the the back end of the lion-headed chebra, it's going to be a little more like a cheetah. Cheetahs are kind of skinnier because they're they're super fast, right? Isn't that the big thing about cheetahs? I don't know if they're as fast as lion-headed chebras, but cheetahs are very fast animals. If anyone knows how fast a cheetah can run, that would be good to share. I feel like they can probably run 80 miles an hour. Or maybe it's 72. Maybe that's what... Uh, Maybe that's what Will was telling us. Maybe that's why, that's how fast lion-headed chebras can run. Um, so here, I'm going to make these legs. They're very different than the zebra legs, right? They're, they're thicker, they're kind of stronger, I would guess. So I'm going to go over those lines. And their feet, they kind of have these big padded kind of surfaces there. Um, hopefully I'm not going too fast here. You can let me know if I need to slow down. So we've got the zebra legs the cheetah legs now let's get the tail now i i quickly kind of drew a tail i feel like i like how that tail looks so i might go over these lines kind of smooth it out a little bit sometimes the first marks you make down look 
you, you put down on the page look fine. You can kind of just keep them where they are. Sometimes I notice it's a little off and I want to adjust things as I go. Um, so here we've got the lion. Maybe I'll darken. Like now I'm noticing the body. These lines seem darker than the lines on the head. That's why as I'm working a lot of times I will um, I'll keep going back and kind of building the whole picture up together. So it all kind of fits. Like one part of it might look fine until you notice how it fits in with the rest of it and then you can you kind of need to keep adjusting. So here if I make these lines a little a little heavier, it'll kind of fit in with the rest of the animal. Maybe I'll even shade in that eye a little bit. When you're looking at a picture, a lot of the times the darkest lines are what your eye is drawn to. Um, so like if the eyes are, are something important in your picture, which usually they are when you're looking at a character, if you really, really shade in those and add detail to the eyes, um, that's, that's usually something um, that helps bring the attention to that part of your picture. All right, so now we have the shape of the animal. Um, I think we need to get into some more details here. Oh, we've got some comments over here. Um, do they only eat Cheetos? That's a good question. When I was trying to think of a good name for this animal or what, what such an animal would be called, I thought of a Cheeto at one point. But I wonder if they eat Cheetos. I bet they do. I bet if you put a bowl of Cheetos in front of a lion-headed Chebra, they would probably eat the whole thing. Maybe even the bowl. I don't even know. 72 miles per hour seems to be the consensus. Although Jim Olin says only 58 miles per hour. he That's a slower cheetah, I guess. Um, all right, so now we need some details. So towards the, the, the back end of the, the lion-headed chebra, you have um, cheetah spots. And as, as Will pointed out, um, every lion-headed chebra has unique spots. So however you want to make these spots, totally fine. So I'm just going to make a bunch of random polka dots. Looks like it goes right down, right down the leg. They're pretty much consistent. Like, like for zebras, the stripes on the, the main part of the body seem a little, a little different than the legs. But for the cheetah, um, they've just got stripes. They've got spots everywhere. Um, looks like the, the tail actually becomes a little stripy towards the end there. So I'm going to make this look more like uh, black stripes as you get towards the end. So there we've got our our cheetah spots. But then as we get towards the, the front of the lion-headed chebra's body, polka dot -a copia nice um, now we get into the zebra stripes and I was thinking we did a tiger which also has stripes I was trying to think of what looks you know how do you tell their zebra stripes instead of tiger stripes and I think the main thing is that the the texture of the animal is different that these stripes kind of look smoother on a zebra where the stripes I made on the tiger I kind of I kind of made it look more furry. And again, every lion-headed chebra has a different pattern of stripes and dots, as, as Will pointed out. So any way you want to make these stripes is totally fine. And I know I love when you guys send me artwork. I feel like this one will be a lot of fun to see. I would love to see your lion-headed uh, Chibra artwork. Make stripes right down the leg. They kind of go across. Oh, got to put some some dots, spots on the back leg here. All right, now one thing I do know about lion-headed chebras 
is that they like to walk on a tightrope, um, which is weird. You know, my, my nephew, Will, was uh, saying that I should do one of the Great Blondin, which is one of my books, Crossing Niagara. He's the main character. Um, and he was a real person who was a tightrope walker who walked across Niagara Falls. So I thought for this picture, um, just to try, to try to sneak that idea in here too, I'm going to make a tightrope. Um, now for you, you can make your, your lion-headed chibra doing something else if you want. Um, but I'm going to make a tightrope. So, so for this, I'm going to make the line kind of going down. Like just imagine such a heavy animal being on a tightrope. Um, it would probably kind of sag a little bit. So I'll make it go back up over here. Make it kind of a thick tightrope. Um, and again, you could just make the ground if you want. Um, it doesn't have to be a tightrope. But if you want, you can make your lion-headed chibra standing on a tightrope. This is definitely the silliest drawing that we've done, I would think. Um, so let's see, I'm going to make it look like a rope. So here, I'm going to make little details. Like if you look up close at a rope, you see um, little lines going across it. This is one little detail that I can add that makes it clear that it is a rope. All right, what else could we add? Um, I know, I think Josh recommended that we, he requested that we draw a blue jay. I think that was something you brought up a few times. So let's make um, maybe a bird flying in the distance. And one way to show that, that this um, lion-headed chibra is way up high on a tightrope, what if we made a bird flying like down below? Um, there's not a lot of room down there, but maybe over here, I will make a blue jay. I was looking at pictures of blue jays. They're a lot like cardinals. Um, so I'm gonna make, Similar to how we drew a cardinal in the first week. I made an oval, a circle. I'll just do a really quick one here. Triangle for the tail feathers. And just for a little background character like this, I can just kind of make it quick and scribbly. But they have sort of the triangle crest on their head. It's a very similar shaped bird to a cardinal, which I've drawn a lot. So there's a bird flying down there. Another way we could make it clear that this um, this is way up high, maybe we see like treetops. You know, maybe there's, uh, you see some tree shapes. Trees can be all kinds of shapes. So maybe you just see some treetops down here. If you want, you can put some clouds or whatever else in the sky. Maybe there's other stuff flying in the sky, other animals that you, you wish we had drawn. You can try to put them flying around in the sky. Am I forgetting anything? I feel like I feel like that's a pretty good lion-headed chibra. First one I've ever drawn. Um. <laughs> Maybe I'll stop there. Um. And like I said, I would love to see your drawings. Um, that's something that makes me so happy every week because I'm sitting here by myself and I'm rambling on and talking to myself. And I know, you know, I can see um, I can see your comments, which is wonderful. Um, but it's really cool to see the work that you're actually doing um, during these little sessions. And also, if you guys have any questions, um, I can answer questions right now. Um, but if you if you post them in the comments and I and I just see it later also I can I can answer you in the comments later um, all right I think I'll stop my picture there um, I would love to see the drawings you guys make I'm gonna share a few of the uh, the pieces of artwork that people have sent me lately um, I've got a few alligators let me see Sophia sent me this awesome alligator you always have that smiling Sun in the corner I love it and some good color there I always love to see what you guys do beyond the stuff we do um, during the during the lesson. Um, a lot of times you add color, you add stuff in the background. Very cool. Another beautiful drawing from Brendan. 
Got some great artists here working with me every week. So cool. Uh, this one is by um, my friend Steve Collins, who is a newspaper reporter. So he took a break during his work day uh, and he drew along with us, which was pretty cool. I think it's pretty good. Looks like it's just in a notebook. Um, I think I only got one piece of artwork sent last week, the 3D episode, which it was kind of more, you know, learning different, learning different lessons and um, hope it wasn't too frustrating for people. The fact that I didn't get many, many things sent to me tells me maybe you weren't thrilled with how it came out, but hopefully you learned some tricks that you can use as you are, um, as you're doing, uh, as you're drawing in the future. I think that's all I have this week. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to look through the comments here, see if we have any, any questions. Um, I have a comment here from, from Val at the Bangor Public Library saying you just stumbled upon this and you wish you found it sooner. Um, you still can promote it to the kids. I mean, there are, uh, there are 11 of these videos now that, um, most of them are on Facebook. I, I think the I think the first week I did a Facebook Live video. The second week I tried to do it a little differently where it was recorded beforehand, but it wasn't as fun because I didn't get to interact with, with you guys as I was drawing. Um, so all they're all on Facebook or on my website, uh, TavarisBooks.com. You can find all the videos and share them with kids. Those will be there. They're on my YouTube page too. Um, it's all, all kind of connected. So, um, so thank you. That would be great if you share them with kids. I mean, I'm hoping like it's been a fun week. Uh, it's been a fun thing to, to do this with the people who are drawing with me each week. But then I, I keep hearing from people who, um, who, who join in later. Um, so hopefully it'll be something that people continue to enjoy even as I take a little break from it. Um, we do have a question from, from Sarah Malcolm, probably Josh maybe. Uh, what is your favorite book? That is always such a such a hard question. I have so many favorite books. Um, there's so many different kinds of books too. Um, I think as someone who makes children's books, I have favorite picture books. Um, I can look around my studio and see what I can find. Um, lately, I've been looking at it. I've been reading a lot of graphic novels, so I have a lot of my favorite ones of those around here. Let's see what I can even grab right here. Um, I've been looking, I've been reading a lot of Raina Telgemeier's books, so I have three of hers sitting right here. Um, Smile, Drama, and Guts, those are all really good ones. Um, I have a whole bunch of favorite picture books right down here. Let me just grab a bunch. So right, right by my drawing table, I have this shelf of, of books that I love. Um, so just looking through some of these, like... Um, Crossing that's illustrated by Bagram Ibatulin. It's a beautiful book. Sector 7 by David Wiesner. Um, that's one of my favorites. Chris Van Allsburg is one of my favorite illustrators. Uh, I have The Sweetest Fig right here. Um, Kadir Nelson is one of my favorite illustrators. This is one of his books um, about Harriet Tubman. Uh, he is an amazing painter. Um, so yeah, my studio is just full of books, so it's always hard to, to pick my favorites, but I have a, I have a bunch of favorites. Um, all right. Well, I think I might wrap it up there. Um, I just wanted to thank all of you who have been drawing with me today and drawing with me um, all of these, all these weeks. It's been a lot of fun. Um, when I started, I mean, it's been such a weird time. I didn't know if, I didn't know if we would just be out of school for a week or two, uh, but here we are in June. Um, but but this, uh, I know for me, it's it's been a really fun way to to start each week, uh, knowing that I had this this fun thing to do each Monday morning, and that you guys would be here drawing with me. Um, I hope you learned a few things and had some fun, and I would love to uh, to to keep seeing what you guys come up with. So I hope um, I hope you're and I also want to thank the parents. Um, I know all the kids that are watching. You guys don't have Facebook accounts, and this is on Facebook Live. So it's uh, I appreciate all of you parents who have been making sure that your kids can tune in each week, and also for you uh, adults who have been drawing along with me too. That's been that's been a lot of fun. Um, oh, and I want to thank Scott Magoon, my friend Scott, who's also an author illustrator who um, has been tuning in every week, and uh, and also Ryan Higgins. Yeah, you guys have added. Uh, 
added to the show with your with your comments just knowing you guys are watching so thanks scott and thanks uh jim olin i see your comment there um oh jim asks what is your favorite of your books um that's always hard to say i feel like um honestly the one i'm working on is my favorite my graphic novel um it's about a girls basketball team um it's it's Right now it's called Hoops. I'm not sure if that will change. It's not coming out until 2022, but I, I'm really excited about this one. Um, of my books that are out, maybe Red and Lulu, maybe Dasher. A lot of times my newest books, my newer books are my favorites. You know, I get kind of used to the old ones, um, but um, I'm really happy with how those ones uh, came out. All right, well, thank you, all of you. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I hope you all keep drawing. I hope you learned something. Um, I hope you have a great day and a great week. And uh, for those of you who aren't done with school yet, I hope the rest of your school year is, is good and, uh, and you have a great summer. All right. Thanks.